tilapia farming in Jamaica, where does it take place? Uh, what's the dynamics of tilapia fish farming? How important it is? How beneficial it is to both uh, the farmer, the country, and the people? Uh, today's video, I'll be talking extensively about tilapia fish farming. Uh, we focus on Danny Bunting's tilapia fish farm. Stay tuned. This video is very compact. I'm going to be trying to actually place all of the contents for this video in sections. Right? So starting with the hatchery, starting with the movement of fish, the incorporation of, 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 of goldfish and coral within the system, the, the, pond system, the pond system itself, how it is set up, the extensive nature of processing the fish, ensuring that the fish is a quality standard, and, and brand and also the dynamics of the operation on the bunting fish farm okay so today i am on danny bunting's fish farm tilapia fish farm a few months ago if not a, a, nearly a year i went on the periphery and i actually got a few baby um tilapia cichlids i'm going to be coming back to this in a short bit but for now we're going to be talking about um we're going to be talking about the whole idea of the hatchery the purpose okay so the hatchery is where the the farming process actually begin right the hatchery as you see now uh you are seeing a container with well there are about 20 containers with uh fries less than one inch and they are where the, the fish actually start life. After they have, caught, uh, have been caught by the workers, every morning, the worker would go into the pond with a female uh, tilapia sickly that are breeding, right? And they would actually catch, or should I say net out, an average between 20,000 to 50,000 fries every single morning. The containers within this space can hold up to 50,000 per one, right? And there are 10 containers on each side. So you can do the maths there, right? So on a given day, each container has an average of between 40 to 50,000 fries. Okay, now the fries will stay here for a few weeks, after which they will be transferred to a pond to actually grow out now the dynamics of the ponds and the dynamics of the fries now let's go into that now the fries in uh before they are actually placed in the containers they are placed to a special mesh right this special mesh actually determines the age of the fish now the fish When I said the age of the fish, I'm talking about tilapia cichlids, right? Now, tilapia cichlids are uh, between one to four days old can go through this mesh. If they are unable to go through this mesh, that means they are too old to be within that container. If they are too old to be in that container, what means is that if they are placed with these small fish, what will happen that eventually these larger fish will actually consume the small fish. And these fish, these large fish, are referred to as recon. They are disposed of. They are not used. Because in turn, they will be, end up being what you call um, predators within uh, the system itself. Um, on the smaller fish, right? Okay. So, the next question is, uh, how is it that the fish is actually purpose for for fish for food as as food fish okay so as to ensure that the fish um is properly purpose when i say purpose i mean it, the fish uh is, is 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 fit and proper for for food fish um a certain thing certain things are done one 
right? Uh, the fish doesn't have a sex between the first four days of its lifespan. Yeah, a, 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 a tilapia, a sickly fry don't have a, de a, a defined don't have a defined sex within the first four days. Now, male tilapia cichlids are the prime cichlids for fish farming because male tilapia cichlids are larger in body structure, give more meat, and are able yeah, are able to do more with it. The females are small and they take very long to go. The males go very fast, right? The, 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 after a few weeks, they are transferred to a pond. So you practically would have 99.9% .9 of these flies being male. I'm going to explain further on um, how you end up with breeders and how you end up with, you know, the structure as to what goes where and who go with what and all of that further down in the video. Okay, so that is explained. Uh, as I said before, one of these containers holds about 50,000 uh, fries, which will eventually go into between a, a quarter acre to a, a, a half an acre or even a, a, a more than that acre of, of, of um, a pond that is cut out to that size, right? In which will allow them to grow large, right? Within its lifespan, a tilapia cichlid from baby to processing as food fish uh, will be moved about six times. Okay. All right, so now that we have understood clearly as to how the hatchery works, points to note, special attention is made within this space so as to ensure that the, the containers are properly aerated, right? The aeration of the ponds, uh, yeah, the containers with the fries is more preferred with an air system than with a pump system right but to some extent the 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 the, the, the water pump system kind of you know it's kind of easier to some extent right but the ear is preferred because um with the ear what it does it forces the the the, the water it forces the oxygen in the water so therefore the entire water space is oxygenated right okay now that i have finished spoken out to you about the whole idea of um eating off these fish and the whole idea of them uh being here for a while let's move on to another section of the video share now one would think that only uh tilapia cichlids are actually bred and kept on farms such as this however you'll be wrong to think that way on this particular tilapia fish farm you can find koi fish huge koi fish two, three feet in length, and also goldfish, right? These fish are kept in the reservoir within the system. And I should say, I should make mention of the fact that um, on this farm, uh, they get water from two sources, one, a well, and two, from the nearby river. Now, over on this side of the property, they are an average about, 45 46 um ponds right. okay in regards to the feeding and the maintenance and the management of the pond okay so the pond system that is used to house the uh tilapia cichlids right i'm coming back to the the koi and the the goldfish right the the pond is made is what you call an earthen pond it is pond that are uh, dug out in the earth and it is lined with clay the area itself is natural clay so uh between one to three foot um thick clay is at the base and at the sides right so just maneuvering the pipes as to how the water go in or the water comes out that's the primary concern so you have about roughly 40 45 ponds um over on this side looking like this and these are the smaller ponds you have larger ponds like half acre one acre three acre ponds on the other side in which we will see in a bit okay so these ponds are actually um 
supplied with water through a well right now as i shared before earlier at the hatchery you have thousands of fries um being uh collected every single morning i think except on sundays so six days a week fries are collected or should i say baby fish are collected and they are placed within the hatchery after a few weeks uh they are placed in a pan like this right and they will be like this uh for a couple of months and depending on the size they will actually be transferred yes they'll be caught in nets uh so you have workers going into the pond and uh, they have their strategy to actually cordon off areas and actually collect um the fish within the pond system right uh there is a pipe out into the water um if you look out like um a, a, a large probably about a 10 inch um pvc pipe that's the pipe which is you would call the overflow and it is used so as to one uh ensure that the pond don't overflow and two whenever water is needed to change which is only at the end of um like when when, when that pond is being reaped you know harvested you call it right yeah so um these fish here are specially kept just for breeding right after they have actually you know lived out their life as 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 breeders they are sold to special clients who prefer um larger size um tilapia right in which they use them to make burgers and fillet and you know they use them to make all different type of things from the meat right so uh the the the, 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 the process now of ensuring that you actually uh get uh muslims uh is a ticklish process um female tilapia are not really uh i call it produced or harvested as food fish because they are small and they take a very long time to grow all right so the ponds are actually kept and they are secured by uh they call it now creative means now where you are at you might be used to herons or birds actually swooping down and um, taking your fish out of your ponds um point to note here at this location at this site the problem of birds actually swooping down and taking out the fish from the pond exists so what the workers do um what, what the worker does is um do is to actually um uh, at the end of the house when the ponds are being i call it you now structured for new fish stock to come in right um, and i'm going to share that with you in a bit what will happen is that they will actually run and you will see that in a bit you they will actually run cords across the um the pond and these cords are what i call fishing lines and they will be run um, both vertically and horizontally across the ponds right and when the heron actually coming down they will not see the the arm um, the, the 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 fishing line because it's very clear like translucent so when they come down they will be uh, tied up into the fishing line and they practically will die as a result of that you will see that in a bit right also being consumed by um by gators um something that you can't really stop because it's near a river and it's near a watershed area so you're going to have that right so give or take according to mr bunting um of the of, of let's say that you get uh let's say that they have is let's say that you're producing a hundred tilapia out of that hundred um he will get about 30 um birds alligators and theft meaning a pretty last and the persons come out and um actually try to steal fish that is three primary problem um within the space right 
uh benefit of this farming um exercise within the community not only is the uh, is this particular farm a benefit to the community but also the country right uh this farm is, which is regarded as one of the largest tilapia farms in jamaica provides employment opportunity for over a hundred individuals both near and wide within the community and 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 their work span from uh labor to sales to marketing to you know technology different different aspects security all that included all right so in continuing in continuing uh what are some of the the measures employed so as to manage the the um problems the whole well, there's a lot of problems um but you know a man wouldn't really continue business if there is not any possible way out okay one security measures are actually implemented so as to manage the the level of of, of theft and um of you know gators coming across you know you'd have the gators actually um they are they're practically shy and they will run on seeing approaching individuals a matter of fact it was shared with me by workers that um sometimes they are actually drawing the fish from the from the pond and the gators will be in the water and their aim which is the gators is to primarily get away from the net so they are there um actually um catching the fish while the gators are actually passing them uh, because they are actually filled with fish and their primary aim is to get out right also right um another means of ensuring that uh the the you know the business continue is by you know ensuring that enough brood stock i should say enough stock is there no i right? no one pan is it is it is it is not a it is not a one pan having the same amount of fish all the time pan is not pond is not um rated based on the amount of fish but the amount of um pounds that the the, 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 the pond actually can um have right um so for example you might have you might collect 10 fish and the 10 fish um weighs uh 400 pounds this is just an example i might be exaggerating but this is just an example you might have 10 fish and the 10 fish gives you uh 400 pound right and you might have uh five fish and the five fish still give you uh 400 and something pound right so you look at the pound and not necessarily the amount of fish uh, when doing a uh, business such as this all right okay on average on average a, a, a three acre pond will probably might have roughly uh between uh twenty thousand up to fifty thousand um tilapia in it that is worth millions of dollars right um and you might say boy uh how is it that the the whole management of of of, of electricity and water is actually done uh within this system so as to ensure that um the fish is actually kept um to the best of you know the possible best right okay the light bill is really expensive right so there's a uh, a measure in place with the the, the sole provider of electricity for uh the 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 the, 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 the what you call it the use of electricity between certain time frame within the day right um also um the the the, the, the pond system is uh it, it it is supplied with water from the the nearby river uh there are there are there are advantages and disadvantages of having a farm such as this nearby a river um one advantage is that you can actually get it can be good water source i mean you don't have to be depending on the domestic water supplier to supply um your farm with with fish right and the whole idea of having chlorine um you know in your water it is like a no no it, it doesn't exist uh one problem however um that that was pointed out to me by mr bunting is that um sometimes when they actually pump water from the the river to supply the pond they might pump um in 
baby jaguar cichlids right and the baby jaguar cichlids sometimes give problems within the pond because the baby jaguar cichlids goes fast and the jaguar cichlids they consume anything that can hold in their mouth right so they will practically deplete the stock if they find themselves into um small ponds with small fish right so uh the, the, the that water source is primarily used for the larger ponds with the larger fish so the jaguar cichlid doesn't really um pose a problem to that extent right there all right okay at the end of every um like harvesting any pond whether it be a three acre a quarter acre a half acre two acre at the end of harvesting when there's no more fish in it right when there's supposed to be no more fish in it right they have actually taken out the fish right um each pond will actually be um be drained until um drain 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 dry and what will happen is that it will stay there for a while and what's the purpose for this the purpose for this is to ensure that the levels of um algae and plankton tons that exist within the pond is kept to a minimal what happens is that if the if this is not done uh, a lot of creatures a lot of a lot of things that are not supposed to be in the pond exist in the pond and if this is not done it will actually metastasize and it will cause a problem in the future right so this is done and it's like a, a brand new start right um whenever it's been filled so as to start production again right point the note also that um the 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 the, the, the pond right is 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 managed aeration wise by um I, I it wasn't in operation when i was at the location was by a system that actually is like a little mini boat like i don't remember what it is it's like a wheel right so it actually oxygenates the water but it's not in it's not plugged in at all times it's, it's periodically right um okay at the end of the harvesting of a pond that means all the fish are removed right um what would happen is that the pond uh will be drained of all the water as i shared before right it will remain um their drain until it becomes hard and tough right a purpose of this is that yet the um the the it, it, the effort is being made so as to get rid of um the the, the other life form that might be, exist within the pond that might cause problems later on right such as um you know high instances of plankton tons and, and algae um if these are not managed um it will actually stifle the pond and the fish will actually die right also in an, an attempt to actually manage the levels of plankton because you can actually tell the amount of plankton that exists within the pond space right you can tell by the color of the water right so the water would be um dark in color uh in high instances and when this do happen um you know normally would feed the fish them uh four times a day they would cut back on the amount of feeding until um the fish actually get hungry and start to consume the plankton tank. because if you feed the fish every day the fish know that they're getting feed they will not consume the plankton and the algae that exists within the space right so in an effort to manage this what um the farm management have actually employed is to actually fish four times a day um monday to saturday six days a week and on sunday um it, the fish are not fed so as to ensure that um some level of control is is taking place with regards to plankton and algae within the pond system okay so this is a measure used so as to manage um this aspect of the fish farming exercise now in reference to a video that i did of uh, i think it's two years ago right there's some correction that i need to make to that video all right several well 
probably about five correction one uh the the farm within itself does not produce fish and process them into um fillet they are just producers of the fish and they sell them to their customer and the customer would do that so uh where i got the fish outside of the uh, should i say the periphery of the of, of the farm right it is not uh, as a result of rainfall or overflow but it is as a result of the the, the fish um that is actually being released is referred to as recon fish these fish are fish that were not caught you know i shared with you earlier on that every morning um workers will actually um catch between twenty thousand to fifty thousand fries now these fish that is um the side in which i got they are referred to as recon fish they were just not caught now what happened is that they are small they are not as large as the ones that are being harvested you know and um as a result of the water actually being released they would actually go in the system um through the the pipe system and be released into the drain which goes into the river thus you end up with those fish right also um hormones are not fed to the fish for growth so i i need to i need to make those statements clear all right so um in reference to the the recon fish um uh, as you can see now here uh, a pond was recently um uh i call it clear harvested and some amount of recon fish was actually removed from the the pond and you can see them right at the foot of this worker where um he is actually showing me um the recon fish these are fish that are very small but not as small as the fries they could not be added to the fries because they would have actually eaten the fries so they had to be flushed out of the system right the pond is being cleaned and prepared for another um set of fish that will soon be placed in it so as to go out to become stock within well produce stock here yeah, within a, a, a few months time right before i end this video i also need to share that the koi and goldfish plant um and within this within this farm it is not bred for sale right uh according to mr bunting danny bunting right um goldfish and koi fish bred in jamaica for the purpose of sale you're not going to get no money right it's it's not profitable it don't make no sense right so you you, you get more money you make more money in business you, know, you have to think about business right you think about the whole weight of balance thing right you get more money whenever you do food fish right and do it the right and proper way now um as i end this year a point to note it was also pointed out to me that um the feed that is actually used to feed these fish are imported feed from overseas these feed are floating feeds so you won't have the feeds actually sink into the base of the pond one and two the feed doesn't dissolve in the pond um as soon as it hit the pond unlike the feeds that are being sold in the local um unlike the fees that are being sold in the local agriculture um sector produced by local producers right these feed as soon as they go into the water if the fish don't get within a couple of seconds they just melt out and it cause problems right so there's a whole array of misinformation with regard to um regarding tilapia fish fish farming in jamaica another note i should also make right in which you probably might hear me share this with you in other shares right but sometimes uh tilapia fish do have a muddy taste right the primary reason for this muddy taste within the uh when it consuming tilapia as explained by mr Dan danny Mac um danny bunting right is that the tilapia consume plankton tons, and the plankton tons leave uh, a, a a type of um residue within the fish gut and you know the system 
So thus, as a result of that, they, they, they have this muddy taste. So as to manage this muddy taste, a special system is developed um, within the farm itself. Right before the fish is actually sold to market, what normally happens is that the fish is placed within a special pond wherein it, it a special mechanism, the, the taste of the, the mud within the tilapia not to exist. It is hope that this video um, was of value to you. It is hope that this video actually share with you a greater insight as to tilapia fish farming in Jamaica. Tilapia fish farming is something that if invested in properly, you will be able to generate much income, right? Uh, also, before I leave, right, some farmers, tilapia fish farmers, um, not Mr. Bunting though, right, not intentionally, um, use Jaguar cichlid as a means of eradicating the recon um, tilapia cichlids within pond right but the we can you, you stand a better chance of getting a better yield um if you do not do that because what happened is that the jaguar cichlids grow very fast and they might end up turn on the stock that you are actually trying to um breed for for profit right in addition in addition to all that is said right um great investment is needed in in um actually uh guiding the tilapia farming industry in jamaica a lot of competition is being made well being had uh with other countries as a result of um jamaica you know having this huge energy bill and water bill not every tilapia fish farmer will have the luxury of being near a river not every tilapia fish farmer will have the luxury of um, having 350 odd acres of land over 70 odd um, over 70 odd ponds within their system. Some tilapia fish farmer will have smaller yield, have smaller space to work with, right? Uh, more need to be done with regards to this effort. There are a few things i need to point out regarding uh fish farming before i i know that this has been a really long video but there are just a few things in which i need to share before um this video end one uh you will notice that uh the fish both the goldfish the koi and the tilapia they are all bred in earthen ponds right there are no spawning maps there are no hiding places the water itself, because it is, uh, what I call it now, it is open to the elements. Water is brown and some, to some extent might have a little darkish color, depending on the amount of plankton tan within the water space. And uh, fries or babies that occur, or should I say, that is birthed within these spaces, have the opportunity to hide uh, from the adults and not be eaten. Also, um, the water within itself are natural waters uh, taken from natural water source uh wells or should i say a well and uh the nearby river thus the use of dechlorinator and water conditioner is not necessary also i don't know if you remember but fish are fed four days uh four times a week Sorry. The fish are fed four times a day, right? And this facilitates quick growth. Also, points to note that uh, there's no heavy, heavy filtration system that is in place so as to, you know, like you, you would have some persons having large aquariums or large ponds and they have some heavy filtration system. Well, with the earthen pond, there is a lot of advantage with regards to this, right? Uh, there's a lot more that could be said, but because of time, I will not um, pursue that. Do have a wonderful day. Join a conversation. Leave a like. Remember to like, share, subscribe, 
and join the conversation. Peace out. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.